It's five o'clock. And uh, it's Watch Me Work. We've been doing this show for 11 years. We started in the lobby of the public theater. It was a joke, like a lot of my plays. It, was, it started out as a joke, and now look at us. We've been telling the same joke for 11 years. And um, some people seem to like it. Uh, and the joke is that uh, we sit here and we work together. Uh, we're supported by the public theater all the way, and we're supported, we've been supported by HowlRound for a few years in the lobby, and then they came on. They're, making, they're helping us make this beautiful community. The deal is that we work together for 20 minutes, and then we talk about your work and your creative process, whether it be writing or painting or dancing or, or just general, how do I keep going in, in very magnificent and difficult times. Um, we talk to you about your work and your creative process. If you have questions after our work session, I'm just going to tell us how to get in touch. Thanks, SLP. Um, so if you are inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the raise your hand button in the participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen on the laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. And if you're watching on HowlRound.tv, you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Um, and you can also tweet at Public Theater NY or message us in our Instagram. And that's all. So many ways to get in touch. Um... And here we go. So uh, we're going to work for 20 minutes and then we're going to talk to you. Here we go.
All right. All right. Here we are. Here we are. Here we go. It's Thursday. I don't have any questions quite yet. Oh, oh okay. We'll just sit in silence. <laughs> Sorry, I clicked the wrong button. I unmuted myself. We have a question. Uh, Sumaya, you're up first. Uh, I'm not looking at your box because I don't think you can hear from this. My name is Hi. Sumaya. I asked you a question yesterday on Twitter about um, oh. writing about racism, and your answer was super um, inspiring. So I just want to thank you. Oh, and I guess. Great question. Thank you. Um, I guess my question might be in a similar vein, but. Um, when writing about things that are, I guess, painful, do you ever worry about how people might react or respond? Um, because I sometimes worry that to put that on the page, am I kind of re, in like re, I guess, inventing violence or re, like, is that, it feels purposeful to me, but I don't always know if it is helpful to my reader? I don't know if that makes sense. But I guess yeah, that, that's a really great question. You pronounce your name Sumeya? Like Sumeya? Okay. We learned, uh, Audrey's really good at names. And I learned something from you every day, Audrey. But Sumeya, so great question. Um, but yeah, because what we don't want to do, and it sounds like you're very woke and conscious about this, we don't want to traffic in, you know, the, you know, we don't want to recreate the crime. It's kind of pornographic, right? It's kind of, it's, it's disgusting, really, to think, yeah, I'll, you know, the rip from the headlines kind of thing, you know, yay, things are, difficult things are happening in the world, and, and we're going to make money off it somehow by peddling it, you know? Um, we don't, we, we're, we're not doing that. It doesn't sound like you're about that at all, but you do want to perhaps open up discussion and conversation about some of the things that are going on in the world. Um, so I would say just keep a mind, you know, keep an eye out for it. And I, I mean, for me, it's always like, for me, it's like my son is getting snacks. What kind of snacks are you getting, pumpkin? Oh, yeah. So, um, for me, it's always like uh, I ask myself, how much skin do I have in the game? You know what I mean? Um, uh, which is, um, you know, how much does this cost me to, to, to talk about, you know? Am I just telling the story of them so I can, you know, get in some kind of foot in the conversation? Or am I, is it really coming from here? And often if it's coming from here, it doesn't have to be people who necessarily look like you or the same socioeconomic class or the same set of experiences. I'm not saying that, but is, if it's coming from here, if it's, you feel that it is one of your stories, right, regardless of the way the people look, right, then I say, you know, keep your eyes open and your ears open and, and tell it, you know. Does that make sense? Thank, yes, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thanks, um, All right, we, oh, oh, fast. We have Vernita. Yeah. Are you there? Yes, hey, hi, SLP. Hey, hey Vernita. Hey, good to see you. Yes, good to see you. I know, I'm trying to share the space. I'm like, I don't want to ask too many questions. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a little bit of a follow-up from the last week or two, I know um, I mentioned that I uh, completed my article on uplifting Black men, um, particularly in this time. I got it out. It's getting, you know, positive responses. And I guess my question is kind of how much to worry about or not worry about all the demographics that the writing is hitting. So, you know, I, I know I wrote it with a very 
specific lens and my inspiration behind the piece was my relationship with my own older brother mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, the and while in general I was greatly impacted by the murder of George Floyd in a way that it hit me in a way far and beyond all of the other previous you know Black Lives Matter incidents that I kind of you know I'm constantly kind of filling myself with but trudging through and and mm -hmm. moving on but this one I couldn't just trudge in and move on I, I this one really got to me um in a different way and it made me recognize you know where I have not done all that I could do in going recognizing and appreciating my brother that he's in my life um it very jarred me in a way it's like Without our fight for social justice or racial justice in this country, our, our country is really designed for our Black men not to be here. Um, it, it feels like an exception for them to be alive, to be thriving, to not be caught up in some type of institutionalized system. And so um, in, per, in getting the, this piece out into the world, you know, it's not only going to Black men, it's not only going to Black women, um, I've had um, some black, well, I should say at least one black woman respond that, you know, she liked the piece, but she felt she's kind of tired of hearing the black women uplifting black men when it's not always reciprocated. Um, and also, I feel like I'm getting a lot of responses from my white colleagues or white people in my network where I worry about if the piece, the piece is my experience and a reflection of that, but then, you know, in other demographics, I feel like more responsible to have a call to action. And, and so that's a long winded way of saying, you know, writing a piece and how much to worry about that, because it's going to be seen not just by one specific group of people. Yeah. Bernita, that's a great question. That's why Star Wars has so many parts. You know what I'm saying? You know, he didn't get it all out there in the first iteration, which wasn't even the first part. So you got part two. After having written this piece, I've been thinking. You know what I'm saying? And then you got part three. I, I've been thinking some more. And you know, you got part four. Plus, I got this to say. And before you know it, you have a whole collection of, of writings you know, you don't have to get it all in one. This isn't a one shot, you know, this isn't a one, one time kind of thing. You know, this is a relationship. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got a relationship. You have a relationship with your work. You have a relationship with the country and the, the, the world. You know, it's a relationship. So you're going to hit it more than one time, right? You can keep That's talking about it. You know, you can keep talking about it. You don't only have to limit yourself to talking about that. You can talk about anything you want. But if you feel like, gee, there were two or three things that I left out, right? Then you can, you can write more. That's the idea. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. You okay. don't have to hit it all in one essay. Certainly not. Okay, that's helpful because I think I think I was putting that on myself to yeah get it all in like that almost as if it was a one-shot deal like this is my black lives matter piece right it's a relationship <laughs> have you ever, you know right when you're like in love with somebody it's not a one-night stand baby okay you know what I'm saying? i know sometimes i go there but that's because it all it really all is it's it, everything comes back to dating or love really <laughs> no but that's helpful Thank okay. you. Thanks, Renita. Thanks, Renita. Nice to see you. Yes, good to see you. Um, all right. We don't, oh, we have a Twitter question. Um, it is from someone named Marmar. Uh, and she, Marmar says, I received a commission for a group theater piece. However, due to COVID, I am changing it to a solo piece. Um, and it may be an online version. What do you think is the future of live theater? Love that question. I'm going to look into, I, I asked my husband the other day, I'm reading the tea leaves, he says, but you're drinking coffee. Um, I'm looking into my orchid that just fell from the, my orchid plant up above my head. Um, what's the future of live theater? What's the future of America? 
Mm, I vote that we'll keep going. Um, we were talking to Jim the other la last week, you know, we, we go out on faith here. So I, uh, I believe in the future of live theater. I think we're going to find a way if we, if we love it, if we want to have it happen, we're going to find a way to, to make it keep happening years ago. I think, Oh, I what, didn't tell you guys um, years and years and years and years ago, there was a theater conference and I was a young and up and coming writer and I was on a panel and, People said, gee, theater's dying. This was like 100 years ago, and they, every, it was fashionable to talk about how theater was dying. And they asked me, so theater's dying. What are you going to do? And I said, I don't think theater's dying. I just think we need to give more love. And the room filled with laughter, awful laughter, because people thought I was so stupid for saying such a stupid thing. And I said, well, I'm never going back to this theater conference. But I say to you guys, um, it's fashionable to say, oh, oh, it's dying. Theater's dying. America's over. You know, that's a luxury that I can't afford. The America part. America isn't over. We're just getting started. Maybe theater isn't over. Maybe we're just getting started. Maybe this is something that's going to evolve into something beautiful. Um, so that's what I say. I think it's great that you're doing. Thanks, Mo. I think it's great that you're doing a, a, a solo piece. I think it's great that you're doing something. Um, you can, you can do both. You can have two versions. You can have a solo version and you can have a version. I've seen many beautiful shows on zoom recently, um, or other platforms. Um, so, you know, and, and live theater, I think there's some live theater happening every day in Washington square park around this time. And it's called the movement. And if you want to see the future of live theater and the future of America in one beautiful show for free, you can show up in Washington Square Park if you live in New York City and other places too, you know? So, yeah, we're coming back. I love that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the choice, you know? What's the choice? Right. But, um, um, yeah, hold on one second. I think we might have another social media question. I just have to quickly find it. Oh, Virginia. Virginia, you're up next. Hey, Virginia. Hi. So I, my question is, um, I'm a new playwright. Um, I just graduated last year and um, I've been in theater for a long time. And so um, I kind of picked up a lot of things along the way. Um, but my question is, so I wrote the play, did a festival and got feedback. And I love feedback because I think it helps me to um, create and understand the audience and so forth. Um, so within my last um, iteration of rewrites, I felt like it got too wordy and it was like too much going on. So have you ever had to go back to your first thought to kind of clean out the cobwebs or do you just keep moving on? I know sometimes in theater when they're, when the, the writer has something or a song, there's something there and they want to do something else. And it's, to me, it feels like the first one was better, but they don't go back to that. They keep moving forward. So I'm not really sure if I should try something else or go with my first thought. I'm not really sure what to do. So you, you wrote a piece, mm -hmm. you yeah. have a, a few workshops, you're getting notes, right? And do you feel like, you know, you have a piece and the notes are kind of taking you over here. So now you have a piece like that's kind of over here. Yes, that's what it kind of starting to feel like. And I yeah. just started last week going back to some right. of the original ideas uh -huh, and it uh -huh. feels better because I felt like it just spoke to me as I was writing it and I right. felt very connected to it. Now I'm kind of feeling like right, right. something else. <laughs> yeah, Virginia, sometimes that happens. Um, giving notes is, I believe, is an art form, uh, is, is, is a real high level of craft. I think a lot of folks give notes who are not as skilled as they might be, you know, and taking notes well is another is a whole level of being you know so you say you're you're you've done theater for a while but that you're relatively new to playwriting taking notes is a s skill you know mm -hmm. so um sometimes it's hard even when a note is a great note you know given by a very skilled practitioner it, on a writer who's not as not used to taking notes you know you might take it in the wrong way and it might just kind of sit there flat right or take you mm -hmm. off in a direction that's not your your piece so yes. 
I would say if you're like this and your notes are taking over here and you're looking back at this and you're going, this feels better. It's a gut thing. Go back to here. Okay. You know, and, and focus on that. And maybe then when you get back to here and feel good about where you started, you can look at the notes and you will have gained skill in the reception of notes you know okay yes okay. yes but that's, that's good. great and, and great congratulations for one writing and two listening to your gut yeah it's yeah. no small thing thank you no small okay. thing good job thank you so much thank You're you welcome. i appreciate this this forum too oh, sure. thanks again yeah okay um all right so we actually have another um oh marmar also tweeted at us to say that she also loved your answer to her social media question. So I just want to make sure that's coming through. <laughs> um, so uh, I, there's another question from social media. It's um, I journal every day and on occasion I write poems. I'd love to divide up, develop a writing habit that's less stream of consciousness and more purposeful and on topic. Would you have any thoughts about that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, you journal, that's great. You journal every day and sometimes you write poems. Um, you might think of, uh, there are a couple of ways to go about it. You might start with a character, you know, like, do I, is there a character in mind that I'd like to follow around for a while, you know, or you might start with a format, like I want to write a play, you know, sometimes it's helpful because you say you already write poems. Sometimes it's helpful to think of, I want to write a play or I want to write a screenplay. So you can start to see what it's gonna look like in your mind and then think, is there a character that I kind of would like to have in my screenplay? Someone that I'd like to see on screen. Oh, my grandmother. Oh, that could be cool. Or someone like my grandma. That could be cool. Okay, what's she doing? Well, you know, she, and then you start adding flesh onto the bones of your character. They don't have to be a real person. I just, my grandmother came to mind, okay? Um, but I would, I would say just start thinking of character. My, a lot of my work and a lot of work that I love is character-based. What do your characters want more than anything? Ask yourself that. What are they reaching for? Uh, they're reaching, they're reaching. What are they reaching for? What do they want more than anything? You know, um, once you decide on the form, if it's a, say it's a play, for example, read some plays. If you can get your hands on some, there are plenty of plays, scripts online, you know, you don't have to buy anything, you can read them online. If it's a screenplay, there's screenplays that you can read or movies you can watch, you know, take a deep dive. It's a great time to take a deep dive into, into making something beautiful and new, you know, good question though. Thank you. Um, all right. Next we've got Melania. Hey, Melania. I gotta click it again. Sorry. Uh -oh. oh, now we yes. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Okay. I was listening to Virginia and her question about notes. And I am in this, you know, that I am taking this class about theater for children and I am giving my work. And this teacher that I have, that I, I love her, but she gives me a lot of notes. Mm -hmm. and and I see that she can for, and they are very interesting notes. But mm -hmm. what is happening to me, and we, I am, I have one more time that I have to work mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. end the, the, the workshop. But what is happening to me is that she gives me, I have this idea, so I write. And I do. And I, sometimes I am happy with that. Sometimes I say, mm. she gives me notes, and some of them, are good for me, but suddenly there are some another ones that are that gets me confused. Suddenly I, I, I begin to wonder if for is in this way, this way, what can I do? And in the middle of the workshop, what happens is that there is a time limit and sometimes I feel pressure and I get so confused and suddenly my story that I was so sure about mm -hmm. gets lost and I, I know that now this instance, the, this workshop, it's ending, and I'm happy about that. But what I am wondering is, how can I know when a note is good for me or not? Because sometimes even I see that I see the note and I say this is good, 
But then what becomes so confusing that I say, maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. So I am a little confused about how can I evaluate how to keep going? Because I want to write and I, I try to keep going and I, I do it. But at the same time, it's, it's very confusing. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, there are a couple of things. And thanks, Melania. And your questions are always good. They're always good. Um, but there are a couple of things that, that you, your, your question brought to my mind. Um, one is, it, it's the way a lot of writing courses are structured, which make it um, sometimes difficult for the students to develop uh, their own uh, sustainable and independent process. And this is nothing wrong with your teacher. Your teacher sounds awesome and amazing. And there's so many good writing programs out there and all that. It just, because what happens is the writing teacher is in your flow. Um, what I like to do when I teach writing is I don't get in the flow. I stay outside of the flow, allowing a writer to write her entire draft before I give critique. See what I mean? So it's just a different way. Of, it's a different way of writing, but e each teacher is different, and, and they have valid reasons for doing what they do. But you're experiencing kind of a interruptus, you know, a flow, creative us interruptus. You know what I mean? It's a yes. getting in the way a little bit um, uh, with, with these notes. Um, I wonder if you could, and we talked about this, I think, before. If yeah. you could write and turn in your project, just just answer half of your question. Write and turn in your project. Well, it's uh, the class is over. But next time you find yourself in a class like this, yeah, um, don't read the notes every single week. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kind of put them aside a little bit. Yeah. And, and read them. I mean, if you're if you feel jammed or stuck or blocked, you might read the notes for encouragement or mm -hmm. to give you a perspective. But yeah. if you're feeling good about it, stay in the flow and 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 keep someone else's voice out of your head. Okay. Okay, um, and I forgot the second part of your question, but I was going to answer it. What was the second? <laughs> I forget it too. I so much. I can I cannot I cannot remember I cannot remember the second part of your question. But um, <laughs> but that's the, the that's the most important thing to try to when you the class is going to be over. Yeah. It's very important that your the your creative voice when you sit down and write is the loudest voice in your head. Okay. And so anything you can do to focus and, and, and build up your, your focusing stamina will help you in the long run. Okay. You know, and again, and it all it's, it's focusing stamina doesn't mean that you got to write for 20 hours at a stretch. You know, again, that's why we use this timer, mm -hmm. 20 minutes, 20 minutes a pop, you know, you're getting your stamina together. Um, if that, if you do three 20 minute segments a day, you're going to get your writing done. Um, Okay, and class, classes show whatever, this is a play actually, if anybody was wondering, um, yeah. but yeah, it is. <laughs> and this is the dialogue of the play and before we did the action, I always forget to mention that. But I like that. Uh, yeah, but plays like interactive things like this, this yeah. is actually um, encouraging the participants to go with their flow. That's what the, I say subtext is that's what the real reason for this show is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, and the the voice that's the that might come before the negativity voices is the voice of encouragement. Yeah. Right. And that's what we're trying to build a huge storehouse of encouraging words in your track in your grooves you know so when you kind of yeah. get confused or something that you can you can hear encouraging words you can see a community of faces that are rooting for you yes and, and that's, that's your fault and it's a treasure it's a treasure to me right, right. That if i am asking you this is because i can feel that something is not right you know yeah. like in another time of my life i will try to do everything these notes say mm -hmm. and now i i feel that no there is something no that's the reason why I asked you. That's the second question. You just reminded me. So okay. when a note, no, so when a note doesn't feel good, like Virginia, 
Mm, you know, it's not that the person who gave the note is evil or anything. Great. I give bad notes to my students all the time. It's just, you know, it's, it's hard to give good notes all the time. So, but if the note doesn't feel good, don't, don't, don't take it. You don't have to take the note. You know, you can, you can put it aside. I was just in a meeting with some Hollywood people right before I got on the Zoom call. I'm like, what's up with that note? They're like, uh, I'm like, really? You really want? I mean, that don't feel good to me. They're like, okay, okay, just cross it off the list. You know, doesn't feel good. If it doesn't feel, I mean, maybe in another draft down the line, it will make sense, you know? Um, but if it doesn't feel good at the moment, don't try to jam it into your, to your piece. If it doesn't feel good, don't take it. That's all. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. We remembered everything. Thank you. Nice job. We need, we need it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Melania. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. We've got about 11 minutes left. And Chris, we're going to you. Oh, my gosh. Um, hi, SLP. Uh, I'm, like, I'm kind of nervous right now. Um, and I actually, like, I got to know you through Elaine, Elena Vila. Um, I studied with her and yeah, she spoke so fondly with you. Ayo, um, oh, okay. Well, right now, um, especially during quarantine time, I kind of like came up with a lot of baby pieces, sort of some of them just kind of fell out formed and some of them are sort of half finished, half there. And, um, but I feel like there's a lot of them. So like, I kind of have like a whole herd of them and I want to find a home for them. Or some kind of structure to, you know, take them to to a more finished state. But I'm sort of at a loss. Like when I Google, you know, look for like courses or whatever, and there's just so many. And um, I guess my question is just, wh where can I take these pieces? Like, should I, you know, look for courses? Should I look for submissions? Or like, or, or is there anything else that I'm not aware of? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I, I have, it sounds like you're doing all the work. So I sort of am, am slow to suggest that you immerse yourself in an institution that might mm -hmm. ask you for money to do what you've already done on your own. Um, I would suggest and since Chris, since you've already done the work, since you're doing the work on your own, which is a beauty, they sound beautiful that maybe you can get friends together to start to do, you know, Zoom performances might be fun. It might be, you might, uh, maybe if you know any, they're pl are they plays, what you've written? Baby pieces, you said. Um, so some of them are uh, like poems and um, that's, mm -hmm. that's really new to me. Um, some of them sort of like prose mm -hmm. and some of them are a bit like the beginnings of a character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, uh -huh. yeah, I, uh, and I do have like a Sunday like writing group that I kind of hang out with. Do you, have, uh, do you have a group of, they don't have to be writers, these people I'm thinking mm -hmm. would be um, maybe performers, people who would like to read your work, um, maybe a director who would like to talk with you about how the pieces might go together or not. You know, people mm -hmm. who, people who um, like a, a virtual potluck mm -hmm. um, where, you know, you would as assign each of your friends. They have to be, you know, friends or friendly people, you know, each of your friends mm -hmm. a piece and they would read it to you, you know, and then they talk to you about your work. Mm -hmm. You know, they could be friends. Um, it doesn't have to be a, a writing group. It can be non-writers. Performers would be awesome, you know, Um and talk about how these works perhaps might enjoy being threaded together. Maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, anything resonates if like that work sounds like it belongs with that one or those two works together could be the beginning of a bird or a story, you know, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But I would say it sounds like it could be fun to involve uh, other people, non-writers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that make that sense? Sounds, yeah, it does. That sounds like a great idea. I didn't even mm -hmm. think about that. And you could also reciprocate. So if you're worried about, oh no, you know, they're going to be reading my work and talking to me about my work. It's going to be all about me for like an hour and a half. Oh no, you can offer to reciprocate. Mm, okay. You I know see. what I mean? And I'll, I'll be yeah. 
play or I'll join in or I'll, if you have a new song, I'll listen to it and talk to you. Mm -hmm. you know? I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, okay. You're welcome. Thank You're you. Welcome. Yes. Good to see you. All right. So we've got about seven minutes left. We're going to go to Pamela. Pamela, are you there? Hi. Hi. Hey, Pamela. Hi. It's my first time in here. Um, so thank you so much for being generous of this space. Um, it's accidentally, but maybe not, but uh, maybe Destiny's Design, my question is a little connected, where I was going to ask about um, over time, like your experience, maybe having friends be readers of your works in progress. Um, the way I've been right now, it's been a couple of years, I want to say like four or five years of really being serious about my writing, um, mostly poetry, but I'm really out of all other genres right now. And uh, some of the programs that I've been in were not as diverse. So I learned to figure out where I was going to have like my people who were, who was really like my community. And so I've been really blessed to kind of like be in different workshops kind of around the country to just kind of have these friends that I've, I like to say we've made for life and, and everything, but I'm being very careful and intentional about, um, you know, we're all doing our own work and the, the ask that I can make, like, please, can you look at this manuscript or like, or this is about to go out, you know, do you have some time? Cause even for myself, I might, um, I might offer and I'll say, Hey, you know, do you want to send it to me? So I'll, I'll take a look. And even looking back now, I'm like, Oh my God, it's been like a week since I responded. So, um, you know, this is it for me. Like, this is what I want to be doing, writing, being an artist, like for the rest of my life. But I want to be really good to my friends. I want to be like really conscious of the things that I ask of them. Um, so right now I just still have like the one, um, definitely have a Pinai, another fellow Pinai reader who's just like, I'm keeping to the one kind of looking at my pieces and we, we work or like, we love each other very well in our writing. Um, so I'm curious how you've kind of um, done this bit of readers and friendship and community over the years. I know over the years, it's like, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I like to do, I mean, I'm probably not as good a friend in reading scripts as other people are of me. I would just put that out there, you know, cause I generate a lot of stuff. And so I'm more often in the, in the, could you please read my work kind of thing. I, but I, what I really work on doing is trying to reciprocate in some kind of way. Number one, if I say I'm going to read someone's work, make a date with yourself. If you say, you know, I, I'd like to read your work, make a date with yourself. Put it on your calendar. Read, you know, Jane's work, you know, Sunday afternoon. That's, that's that. No, nothing will get in the way of that because that is your expression of love for your friend. Right. And then you can make a date with Jane to talk with her about it. Uh, and that will kind of hold you to the finish line of I'm going to read it and I'm going to have some ideas, right? Um, that really helps because sometimes we just get busy and you say you want to be helpful to Jane, but uh, things, other things get in the way. So make yourself, put it in your calendar. It's like going to work, you know, right? Also, um, we want to be generous and kind and loving. So sometimes we overextend ourselves and that's often tricky. You know, we want to... Um, back in the days when we mingled together, I would give lots of lectures all around the world and people would say, people would come up to me afterwards and say, hey, please, could you read my manuscript? And I'd say no. And they'd say, why? And it's, I said, because I, if I said yes, I wouldn't. And then you wouldn't, you'd hate me. And then it would be sad. So say no up front, or I, I just can't, I love you, but I can't get, I'm not going to get to it for another couple of months. So give it to me in a couple of months we have to learn to say no thank you not right now it's not good it's not a good time for me right now right so i think kind of an openness you seem like you have a lot of really great friends that's wonderful i'm really uh, i i'm impressed by you have sort of the one friend and you say i'm going to give it to them you know maybe you'll make a date with them like please will you read this 
It's one person you're asking. You're making a date with them to talk about it, right? Okay, and you're, you're going to receive that loving feedback. Um, yeah, I, have a few, I just have a few people, even though I've been at it for a while. I have a, just a few people that I talk with about my work. I mean, one of them, luckily, he's a, you know, what, do you, what do you call it? A, um, whatever, the people who are capt, a capt, a hostage, <laughs> my husband, <laughs> and who gets, you know, 99% of the, you know, every line is like, what do you think? You know, like that. It's horrible. I, you know, it, it's just horrible. But that's, you know, that's the relationship, um, which I really, really, really appreciate. Um, and he's got a really great ear and a great sense of timing and drama and, and structure and everything. So I, I'm very appreciative of that. But I have some friends. I have a great friend named Bonnie Metzger who's in Chicago. I'm always calling up Bonnie. Hey, could you read something, please? You know? And I try to reciprocate. Even if it's not reading a manuscript of hers in the same time frame, I try to give in ways I can. Is that helpful, Pamela? You're muted. Are you there? Oh, I was, yeah, I was trying to say it, it was really helpful. And it's just, it's, um, I forgot what I was reading. I mean, I'm reading a lot of things. Um, or maybe I was watching something that was just like, it's not bad to be indebted to the people you love to like allow them to help you or something. Oh, it was probably a K drama, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, just having that, like, but I know this person could help me. And I try to be like, really just like, just conscious, you know, that they're working on their own stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Can you can you offer like, so when are you going to let me read, you know, that novel of yours, you know, you can because some people are really shy. They're like, eh, Pamela's stuff is so good. I'm not gonna, you know, um, what I mean? you can invite but you can invite the reciprocal thing or just talk about it. You know, you want to talk about it? how's it going? Let's talk about your work for an hour. You don't have to actually give me pages, but we can have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be helpful too. Yeah, I think it's just opening it up and just saying like, oh, you know, I really kind of want to know what y'all are doing. Like some of us got together in a group at one time and every now and then I hold a space of just like anybody want to drop in? We'll hang out, talk about what we're doing, mm -hmm. um, but also not making them feel guilty. Like if they're not working on something or right. they're really unable, like a lot of friends I know that are actually really unable to write right now. Have them come here too. This is what, that's yeah. exactly what we do. Like, hey. We already told like two people who definitely already signed up. Yeah, yeah. But that's a great thing that you're doing with your friends. It's, it's a really beautiful thing, Pamela. Thank you so much Thank for you. this. Thank you. Thank you. 601. Woo! Woohoo! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think this was our ninth week that we're just finishing oh. up. Yes, you're amazing. Oh. <laughs> amazing. If you guys weren't here, I'd just be alone in a Zoom call with Audrey. Well, that would be cool. That'd be cool. But we could do that too, but we could do it another time. Kind of sad. We kind of sad. <laughs> Um, awesome. Well, as a reminder, everyone, the links for next week will go up tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, I know they went up late last week and they will not this week. Um, so please uh, sign up for next week when they go up. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you, SLP. Oh, thank you, Audrey.